Hello. Good, uh, good morning, Rale. Um It's uh, Jason Curtis calling from South Africa to do an interview with Maxim. Speaking. How are you? Yeah, I'm cool. I'm cool. Congratulations. With what? <laughs> Hell's Kitchen. Oh. Ah. <laughs> okay. It is you, you know. Sorry? I said it is you. You can. You should take. You should take. Uh, take oh, okay. a. a compliment. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, cool. uh, but uh, how does I it feel? Expect uh, a lot of people to understand it, but uh, yeah. And why is that? You Sorry. Why is that? Um, just because a lot of people are going to uh, expect me to be the same way as I am as a prodigy. Mm -hmm. yeah, and. Uh, a lot of people are going to try and expect like a poison type or mm. or something like that. Mm. You know, and what I'm trying to say is, you know, this is me solo. Mm. Mm. Obviously, a bit of a, a bit of a frustration for people just to look past that to see what you can offer as as a solo artist. I'm sure. Yeah. But um. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But in, in in putting the album together the way that you did. It does. It certainly it doesn't sound like you were trying to do something completely different. It was just what you chose to do. Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, you know, I don't write music like them. Mm -hmm. I write music my own way. Sure. You know? And uh, that's why it's come out. It's just my own style. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, I've been in the group for ten years, mm -hmm. and we're all influenced by each other. Sure. You know, so, you know Liam's obviously influenced by me. Mm -hmm. I'm influenced by Keith. Keith. You know, by me and, and so on. So, um, yeah, I mean, you'll hear slight notes, things in there, that, you know, which has prodigy type things because I'm part of the prodigy. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Your personality has to come through. Yeah, totally. So, um, yeah, you can hear my personality on, on the album, which is the same as it would be on any prodigy tune. Mm -hmm. But now, what, what did you do? Differently, that say perhaps you you would have maybe uh, you know um, in the past wanted to have included um, you know on a prodigy album that for whatever reason just didn't fit and that you thought okay well this is something that I want to take away and work on my own and actually um, you know grow grow that into something a bit bigger. Um, so, um, when you when the, the, the prodigy um, style. It's prodigy styles, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's a totally different style to my style. Um, it's not lyric, lyric based, mm -hmm. like a full lyrical, you know, style. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, that's what I wanted to bring different to my, you know. I mean, I've been writing lyrics from uh, from the age of fourteen, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, I kind of wanted to. Uh, Incorporate some of you know, the style which I I did from from the age, you know from my early age mm. to the project. It kind of I felt like um, just the dance scene was stopping me from I don't know um, because it wasn't a lyric based scene. Mm -hmm. It was very easy to do do uh, freestyle. Yes. Um, so I got lazy in writing lyrics and songs. Things like that. Mm. Um, so I felt like I, I felt like I lost something over the years, you know. Mm. I just wanted to get that back. Now the, the the people that you pulled in to work with you on this album, um, was it a case of you putting out invites to people, or just um, sort of approaching your circle and saying, "Well, look, I'm putting this album together. Your vocal would be perfect for this." Or um, how did that actually all come together? That you got the the people that you do have on the album involved? Um, I mean, all the people on the album, they're just people I respected lyrically. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, skin. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, her style is just, you know, you can't fault it really. Yeah. Um, and I kind of just wanted to invite people in. You know, the way I contacted these people is, is literally, I, I phoned them up myself rather than going through the the record company type manager type thing. Do you know, I spoke mm. to them face to face. You know, right. You know, doing the track. Mm. You know, literally right out because I can't, you know, I, I want it to be, it's a personal thing. I mean, I want sure. it to be 
person. I want it to be right. I want it to sound right. I want it to, um, you know, I want everything to come across right. You know, mm. rather than just saying, okay, let me get the most famous rapper. Let me get the most famous singer. Mm. You know, mm. I just want it to be uh, quite personal and real and true. Mm. You know? mm-hmm. um, so I literally contacted everybody myself. I mean, even there's even my cousin singing on yes. um, two of the tracks. You know, yeah. You know, once again, I could easily have gone to, you know, not not easily gone to, but, you know, like, say, for instance, some people might go to a so-called Whitney Houston or Mariah Carey type singer. Right. And say, oh, yeah, let's get to do that track. You know, I basically got my cousin because she could sing good. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I kind of like started out to be quite a raw album, and I just wanted to be raw, but real. Sure. And obviously that realness would shine through, you know, not just something um, a lot of people catching on the market and, and just make an album, you know, uh, just churn an album out, just to, just to cash, in, cash in, basically. Right, right. Just something I needed to do for myself. So it's almost uh, sort of not exercising ghosts or putting putting demons to rest. It's just, um, <clears throat> as I say, just an extension, um, an extension of your personality. Yeah. But you... No, it's more personal, do you know what I mean? Because I've always wanted to have an album in my hands to say, yeah, I've done something. Yes. I've achieved something for myself. And, uh, I mean, once I've got the album pressed and finished, I've, I've been through so many stages of doing this. When I finished My Web, I thought, oh, My Web in my hands, first EP. Mm. When I did finish Carmen Queen, I had Carmen Queen in my hands, my album, my first single. Mm. I've achieved something there. Mm. And even when I finished mastering the album, I, I, I took that as a landmark. Wow, I finished mastering the album. Mm. And even when I had the finished product, all pressed up, finished artwork, everything in my hand, I just looked at it for ages because I, you know, I was just more impressed with the fact that I'd finished an album, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, that meant more to me. Sure. Uh, than anything. And, uh, you know, it's not some, you know, obviously doing interviews and stuff like that. Sure. Doing uh, press and whatever. Obviously, I'm going to promote it. Yep. About it, you know? But it was just the fact to have something in my hand. That was yours? I put my effort into creating myself. Yes. But it was more important to me. Well, it, I mean, it, it certainly seems that it, it, it was it, it, it was very, very important. I mean, to the point that, you know, you, you know, the, the insistence on, you know, on producing the album, on and being involved in every aspect, I mean, as you say, right down to selecting, you know, making those personal calls, you know, to, to the various people that you wanted on the album. So you kept it very, very close. Yeah, totally. I've done everything on this album. I mean, even down to the contracts. <laughs> <laughs> Which are always the good ones to get involved with, yes. Oh, yeah, I've learned, the thing is, I've learned so much about the music industry and just often just producing. Mm. You know, the contracts, even doing that, I've done it myself, mm. you know. Um, obviously, I've got assistance around me, but sure. I've literally done all the, the hard work designing the artwork. Obviously, I've got someone at the record company to help me with the artwork, but I've done it. all the input has been, come from my head. Mm. I just let them really put it into practice or whatever. Mm. But um, it's all from my head. Sure. No, I mean, a, a track like uh, Carmen Queasy, I mean, it's doing particularly well here in South Africa at the moment. Um, I mean, it's all over the radio. I mean, huge track. Um, probably, you know, I mean, if I look at the album as a whole, probably the most accessible, or probably the most commercial track um, on on the album. Um, the balance of the album takes a bit more listening, which I think it certainly sounds that that's that's what you would like people to do is actually go in and investigate and discover the album, you know, and and have it, you know, regurgitated in you know in in a very personal way as well. Yeah, I mean. You know, even though I released Carmen Cruz as the first single, and uh, um, I could have taken, I could have, could have taken the route a lot of people take, mm-hmm. is release, uh, do an album with like four Carmen Cruz. Mm-hmm. You know, some people when they find a formula, they just stick to that one formula. Yes. You know, um, I could easily have done that, but yeah. that's not what it's about to me. You know. Yes. Um, you know. Um, yeah, a lot of people, you know, have released Carmen Cruises and uh, people are going to expect an album, uh, you know, expect an album, you know, with all 
those tunes similar to that. Yes. Um, but they're going to be pleasantly surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because it's a lot raw. Some of the tracks are raw. raw. Sure. Um, and the lyrical style is so different as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, a lot of people are going to be surprised, you know. Mm. I'm not fooling anybody, do you know what I mean? I'm just showing people my diversity. Which is important, I think. But, well, I mean, for you, as I say, after, you know, after spending the last 10 years in a collective and now going out on your own, it's as, as exciting as you say it's been, um, and it is liberating to do your own thing. Um, daunting at all? You know, that it's just, it's, it's you and there's really nobody else out there. So if it, if it, you know, you've got no one to sort of lean you know, lean on, um, or, you, or you don't have that support structure around you that you typically have in a, in a band? Um, yeah, I mean, I did, I mean, when I first started doing it, um, you know, I was excited, so excited. Um, I just thought, yeah, I'm going to do an album just me, 12 tracks. Mm. How, you know, wow, I can't wait to have mm. you know, 12 tracks of just me. And then it kind of like, thought, why paint, you're painting a black and white picture, why paint something just you? Mm. You don't want to listen to the track, it's just you. you know I mean? so yeah. That's why I brought in police to collaborate. Mm. Um, so, in a way, I don't, you know, I just thought it would be more interesting having someone go, instead of going, someone who goes flat, maximum, maximum second track, maximum third track. Yes. Why not have some bit more interesting fourth tracks, skin, my cousin, different flavors, different styles, mm. you know. Um, so, in a way, I kind of look at the album, not really, even though it's my solo album, I don't see it as just me. Yeah. You know, I don't see it as, oh yeah, you, you, you want to express yourself because I brought in other people to express themselves as well. Sure. Um, so I don't really see it as on my own, you know. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm involved in all, all the tracks. I mean, the funny thing that someone said to me, actually, uh, when I released Carmen Cruise, is, man, how can you release that single? You're not even in it. <laughs> in vocals. <laughs> It's not about being selfish, it's just about doing good music. Exactly. You know? Exactly. It's not, about, it's not about me being in it. It's yeah. the track and I'm not in it. Yeah. You know, it's like Divine Silas track. Yeah. Actually, the track to see when I rang him up. Yeah. And I sent him the track and I said, Oh, you're up for doing the track. And he goes, Oh, you'd be, you'd be honest. Yeah. And I said, Oh, man, I love that track that you do on your album, Michael Senior. Mm -hmm. And he goes, All right. Because I said, I like the style, man. Mm -hmm. And he did the lyrics in that style. Okay. Back to me. And the whole idea of that track. Spectral Wars was he was going to do half and I was going to do half. Okay. But when I listened to it, I just thought, man, I can't compete with that. <laughs> <laughs> and you're honest. <laughs> uh, I just left it as it was. I just went, nah. <laughs> you know, why try and chop a piece out and, and, and say, ah, oh, no, I've got to be on this album. Yeah, to flatter your ego. That track when it's as good enough as it is. Yeah. So um, I said, nah, I'm running out of man. It's fine. You know, I just had to respect and just did it. Sure. And I think he's done it because of the fact that I give him respect and freedom to be here. Sure. So, um, I said, no, that's your track. And then... Uh, I'm still involved. I like the music. No, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with just putting out good music, even if I'm just involved in writing music. Sure. Well, it, I think it, it, it makes for a, a far more dynamic um, release, as you say. It's not just... Uh, it's not just this selfish, self-indulgent sort of... Um, yeah, but, I mean, people would expect you to be in the front of the camera. Ah, oh, it's maximum. Oh, it's yeah. Track. Second track, maximum. Third track, maximum. You know, mm. it's not about that. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, it's not about... Um, I did read an article in The Independent over here. Yeah. Um, you know, this album is not an artist being self-indulgent and, and egotistical. Mm. So it's not, you know... A lot of artists would be their solo is because they want to get something out so desperately. Mm. They say, I can do that, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that, but it's not, you know, I'm not unhappy being in the group. Mm. You know, I love being in the prodigy. Sure. You know, I'm still in the prodigy and I can't wait to go back on the tour again. Mm. You know, but, um, you know, there's more to me than just being on stage. Sure. And there always has been. Um, if, if, if I got into the prodigy and that was all I knew, mm. and then I tried to do something else, then people could say, Yeah. Oh, no, I'm just to do. But I've been doing this before I was in the prodigy. Mm. Mm. You know? But I think it's a it's a win win situation because I mean, when you you know, when you rejoin the group, um, you'll be able to bring everything that you've you know, you've acquired from doing you know, from doing this album to the point that on the back of um, 
what happens, you know, with, with Prodigy is that, you know, if you come back and decide to do album two, I mean, it just gets stronger and stronger, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. totally. Mm. I mean, I, you know, um, I talk, you know, talk quite regular, you know. Mm. It's like easy to take me on to remix a track, you know. Mmm, damn good idea. I was to try and remix it. You know, it was a new Prodigy track in the album. And, you know, obviously, I can do something different to Prodigy music. Not saying, yeah, I'm going to muscle in on the production. <laughs> no. Mm. Uh, you know, obviously, that's down to Liam. Yeah. But, you know, we kind of, in the last couple of years, we've kind of grown up on music on the same kind of level, mm. in a way. Um, you know, three years ago, I, you know, I wasn't really. 100% on my production, it's getting, it's getting better, mm-hmm. and uh, there's still loads to uh, improve on, but you know, on the same level, I can show Liam a few things in the studio, Yeah. he shows me a few things in the studio, but, um, it just makes it stronger. Sure. And, um, I mean, is it the kind of thing that when you were finished the album that you wanted to play it to him and sort of say, well, you know, this is the album, what do you think, kind of thing, was it important, you know, what he thought, or, you know? to get his input on it? I mean, I, I played it for all the guys in the group. Yeah. It was important. But I, in a way, I, I kind of, it wasn't really important what they thought because I was mm. just doing it for myself. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to get some response and some feedback. Mm. Um, yeah, I played to Liam Anke, Dan Lee, mm. and uh, Lee was not a band anymore. <laughs> no. You know, Lee rang me up two days ago, actually. Uh-huh. left a message on my answer. Stunning. Because he heard the finish. You know, even though I played a track. Yeah. He actually heard the finished article. And he was listening to it. He just said he loved it. Um, yeah, there's a couple of tracks on there that he likes. Mm. You know, but once again, you know, it's not really a case of they liked it or not. Even if they hated it, I still like it. <laughs> no, but it's, I think it's nice. It's nice for them to but, sort of be, yeah, be supportive. Yeah, yeah, totally. I'm um, yeah, supportive. Yeah. You know, even though he, he did ask me, you know, if I wanted to be any more involved, just give him a call. That's but, um, I thought that was respect, but sure. I kind of wanted to do this for myself. Yeah. Know, and I kind of kept him out of the picture. Mm. Um, but, you know, I did um, involve him in the scheming where, <laughs> um, literally, I finished scheming. Mm. And I, I said, oh, I played it to him. I said, he came around, I, said, I played it to him, and I said, oh, I don't know about that. Sure, what do you think? Mm-hmm. He says, oh, no, it's a really good track. He says, you know, I'd like to work on it, maybe do the beat slightly different. It's cool. Mm-hmm. He said, if it doesn't work, you've still got the original. Mm-hmm. So, so we came over to my studio and said, oh, this is working. We literally did it in four hours, five hours, just modified it, rearranged the stuff, and wrote the beat. Mm-hmm. The bass line, and uh, it turned out to be a better track than what it was originally. You know, and once again, it wasn't being selfish. No. You know, I've got to write it. He wrote it, the piece of the baseline, mm. you know, to the track, and uh, it just does have a good track, so it would be stupid not to put it on there. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. But I mean, what happens, hypothetically, if this, if, if your album becomes, I mean, that it becomes huge? Is it a case of, would you, you know, I mean, in putting the album out, did you ever contemplate that you could only, perhaps only handle you know, one side of it, or, you know, that you would have to give up something? No, um, no, it doesn't matter how, how the album gets, even if it gets huge, if it sells 10,000, if it sells 10 million, mm, mm. Um, which I doubt it, but... It can be nice. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but, but, you know, it's not about um, no. that, really, you know, because... Uh, in doing this album, I, I've had to think about it quite hard, you know what I mean, because of being in the band. Sure. How to do things and how to go about things. And, you know, one thing I've said to the band is, and the other guys, and, you know, I'm not going to perform the album live, you know what I mean, because, one, there's so many collaborations on it. Yes, you'd never get the same people under the same roof again. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm. And that was a choice I made also, to have so many collaborations, because I wasn't intending to tour it. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm thinking, why build something so strong over ten years? Mm. And, then, and kill it. Mm. And then kill it and think you've got something even better. 
you know, why not have both of them work together, do you know? Sure. So I'm not going to tour the album. I've, I've, I've had a decision if anybody wants to see me tour, they have to come and wait to the prodigy. Yes. Um, you know, this is my solo project, and, I'm, and it's over there. It's mm. over there. Mm. The prodigy is right over there. Yeah. Two, two different entities. And, and the first call is a prodigy, you know? Sure. If, I'm, if, if someone says, oh, I don't want to write the track, and I say, sorry, you know, you'll have to wait. <laughs> which is yeah got, got to do a show with quality which is in that's first call mm, mm. when I have time which I do have time I'll do my answer mm, mm. well I mean I, I think it's great because uh, certainly you're certainly never going to have a dull moment that's for sure <laughs> yeah I mean it keeps me excited sure um, you know I mean even when I am with the product you know uh, 70, say 70% out of the home the other thirty percent, I'm on my own. Mm. I write music. Yeah, that's my hobby. That's what I like to do. That's what I've always liked to do. So, mm. where some people like to go snowboarding, I mean, I do snowboard as well. Yeah, but where some people like to go snowboarding and play cricket or tennis. Yeah, it's your sport. In that, in that downtime, mm. I write lyrics and write songs. Mm. So you know, that's just what I do. And so it's, a, it's just inevitable that you know it's going to come to a, a peak where I'm going to put things together. Sure. Well, I, I also think the nice thing about it as well is that the music lends itself to, as you say, um, it's not, not something that you would you would take out on the road for, you know, for obvious reasons, but from a video point of view, I mean, especially like, the, I mean, the Karma Kweezer video is a classic example of, you know, of of what the music can, um, you know, can can handle, you know, on another level, you know, so you can you can play quite nice on a, you know, on a multimedia level, you know, with with the tracks. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I kind of like want to concentrate more on um, more on songs. You know, I mean, if I do material in the future, I would love to get a, a, a group together and literally do. Um, when I say group together, I'd love to a guitar and a bass player and a drummer. Mm. I don't know, it's just things I, need, I, I want to do for myself. Yeah. I don't want to get to an age where I think, oh, I could have done that, I could have done that, I never took a chance, it's just, it's just too big. Mm. But an, an, an exciting time all round. Yeah. Thank mm. you. <laughs> well, sir, thank you very, very much. I, I, I think I've overstayed my welcome. <clears throat> but uh, to say, um, I must admit, when, when, I, when I heard the first single, um, I was... Uh, I was very eager to listen to the album. I think a lot of people too out there will, as I say, will be pleasantly surprised by you know by what the album has in store as well. So, I think the album is more. It's something we have to listen to for quite a while. Yeah, but that's but isn't it? That's the sign of a to me of a of a truly great album anyway. I mean, because I think if you play a track and it translates immediately, it tends to sort of sort of get a bit stale, a bit quicker. Yeah, that's right. Mm, mm, mm. But thank you uh, very much for your time. Cool. And uh, so not that you need it. Um, I'm sure you're going to get many an accolade from all over the place. But uh, as I said, um, excellent job. Oh, thank you. Have a good day. Oh, okay. Cheers. Bye-bye.